everyone, it's Ashley. Welcome back to my channel. I'm doing something a little bit different for my channel today, but that's something that I want to focus a lot more on, and that is uh, reviews for new products and tools. And today I'm going to be focusing at the Wendy Vecchi and Ranger Make Art Station. I was really excited to see this. I think it's really different than anything that's on the market, and I wanted to get it and review it for you guys. I love new surfaces to do things on. I have the glass mat that I got right away. I'll pretty much buy any new tool, especially if there's a good pun involved, like the station. Just want to let you know that right there. But I wanted to get it and review it because I think that it's really different than anything that I have personally, and I wanted to share my experience with you. I'm going to go ahead and change the camera angle in just a minute so you can see all of my experiments and what happens, but I want to let you know just some surface details about the station itself. So on the back, it's got a lot of information and also um, on pretty much any site that you could buy it from. I got this from scrapbook.com and it was $17.99. So it's another really good thing about this is that it's a great price point. Sometimes things are a little out of my budget and I'll stretch for it anyway, but I didn't have to worry about that with this. This was right in my budget, so I wanted to snag it right away. So on the back you can see that it's got these four different ideas on how to use this. So we have stenciling, aligning, embossing, and creating. One of the main reasons that I wanted to get this was because of this magnetic ruler. I think that is so cool and I will use that all the time. So I'm going to go ahead and open this now so you can see what comes in it. This um, mine opened from the bottom though I'm not it doesn't, I don't know if that really matters. Anyway, so it comes protected. And I do want to let you guys know that I have already done the experiments on this. I'm filming this portion after. Um, so I've already opened this. I don't exactly remember where the magnets were, but it comes in this nice like bubble wrap. And then you've got the four uh, magnets. And it's nice because these magnets have the little like cushion on the back. Is that what that's called? Cushion? Um, and then again, this ruler that's magnetic and I, this is probably my favorite part of this entire thing. So I'm really excited for that. Um, I do have a little bit of stuff on there as you can see, but it's really pretty. It's really nice. Um, and the grid is like etched on there, like a misty is how I would explain it. You can feel it, um, which is really nice because I feel like for some reason I just like to be able to feel the grid. I don't know if if you know what I'm talking about. So anyway, it's magnetic and then it also has these little holes right here so that you can hang it on like a, uh, what is this called? Pegboard, a pegboard if you wanted to. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and change the camera angle now. I do wanna mention though that it's magnetic but it needs, like it's it's just metal. So dyes don't stick to this. Um, I don't know if Anybody else saw that that would happen? I thought it might happen, but it didn't. So just to let you know, this is metal. It needs like magnets, a magnetic surface to stick to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and change the camera angle now just so that you can see all of the experiments. I hope that you enjoy this. If there's anything else that you'd like to see me review, please let me know in the comments and I will be sure to do that. So first let's just get into again what comes in the package. It specifies them as one 12 by 12 steel magnetic base with printed grid, four brushed aluminum magnets, and one flexible magnetic centering ruler. This ruler is also really cool because it's got the center marked on it as zero and then it goes uh, up in either direction, which is really nice. Um, when you're trying to center things. So the first thing I'm going to use it for is stenciling because that's the main thing that I've seen it used with. Now on the on scrapbook.com, it specifies and says that for stenciling, you can line up your paper or cardstock and place the stencil over it. Secure both pieces in place with your magnets. Your paper and stencil won't slip or slide as you're blending, adding ink mediums or paint and a fun stencil design. So I'm gonna go ahead and try that here. My issue that I saw when I was beginning was that I really didn't want to put it on the paper. I wanted it just to be on the stencil. Um, when you apply uh, something like painter's tape to the reverse side of your cardstock, securing it to the stencil, it makes it so that not that it doesn't move around, but that the paper is adhered to the stencil so that you don't get movement in the stencil. So I wanted to try it here with just putting the magnets on just the stencil. I didn't want it to 
interfere with my stenciling design on my cardstock. So I'm using some Distress Oxide and an ink blending brush, and I'm just doing it really gently. And you can see that I got some movement there with that stencil. So I was going to go ahead and sort of try to line it back up, which would, which could be really easy, but for the sake of experimenting and trying out exactly what it says to do, which I also try out things it says not to do just because I'm doing the full experiment here. I just wanted to show you what I got first. So this is the stencil that I got. Obviously it looks beautiful. It held it really well for a little bit, but it did cause a little bit of movement because there was no way for the stencil to be adhered or to stick to the cardstock when the magnets were just on the outside of the stencil. So then I went ahead and placed the magnets on the corners of my cardstock. This is holding it in place much better. I'm not going to get the stencil design on those corners though. So maybe a good thing to do or to think about before would be to cut your cardstock slightly larger when you're going to be using this for stenciling, since you're not really going to be able to get into those corners if you're using it like I am here with the magnets on the corners of the cardstock so that the stencil doesn't move around. I do find that it holds it really well in this instance. It's not moving around at all. And I do have my hand there on the actual station itself because it is really light, which is a bonus. You can move this around anywhere you want. You can carry it with one hand, no problems whatsoever. It's very light, but also very sturdy. But the thing with that that you'll see in just a little bit is that it does slightly move around your work surface a little bit. So here is what I got from the stencil after I put the magnets on the cardstock itself. It worked really, really well. Like I said, you might just want to cut your cardstock a bit larger than you need it. Um, that way you can have the stencil on the entire uh, card front or project front. So I'm now going to go ahead and try this one more time with the magnets just on the stencil itself and working from the center rather than coming off from the edge. I wanted to try this in every possible way because I wanted to give the best uh, results that I could. So I'm starting in the center here rather than just off to the side and I'm getting a little bit better uh, result. It's not moving around as much. Um, but it is still slightly moving, but it's so small to the point that I actually didn't realize it while I was ink blending with the stencil. So when I remove the stencil and the magnets from the stencil, I'll see, or you'll see in my design that it's definitely moved a bit. And you can see that here when I pick it up, it's not as crisp. It's, it's not terrible, but it's not as crisp as the other ones. The lines look like they've definitely been moved a bit. So I would say definitely, in my opinion, to keep the magnets on the cardstock and perhaps cut the cardstock a bit larger than you actually need to um, just take care of those corners that you won't be able to get. So now I'm going to go into something that's fairly new to me, and that's making my own glitter paper. I love the fact that I can make my own glitter paper. And so what I'm going to do is ink blend just onto a cardstock. I'm not going to use a stencil for this. I'm just going to use a cardstock and I don't need the entire thing blended. So I'm going to go ahead and put those magnets just on the bottom half of my cardstock. I'm then going to go ahead with some distress oxides and not hold it at all. Just do some ink blending and it's holding it really well. The cardstock is not moving at all, but you can definitely see that the surface itself, the station itself is moving a bit. It's, it's rotating a little bit as I'm trying to blend with it. So I want to keep my hand on the station and I apologize for uh, this being a little bit shaky here, but I wanted to make sure that I did the best that I could to ink blend how I normally would. So here I'm going to go ahead and just make this. Uh, ink blend as best as I can. And then I'm going to end up using some Nuvo Glimmer Paste in Moonstone. Now, the surface does not, or the, the description does not specify that it will take lots of different mediums and clean, clean, and you know, clean, clear. Um, so you want to be careful. It does say that you can use a craft mat and that you should use a craft mat when using things like Glimmer Paste and alcohol inks. 
but I don't want to cover my space. I like having the grid. I like having the or the need to not have to grab my craft mat. But for this surface, you probably should. However, for the sake of the experiment, I'm not going to. I'm just going to do it right onto my station and just see what comes of it. So I can at least say with certainty that the ink from ink blending wipes off really nicely from the station. I don't get any residue or discoloration there. I am now going to go ahead and create this makeshift glitter paper by using again Nouveau Glimmer Paste in Moonstone. So I'm just going to pick some up on my palette knife there and make sure that I evenly distribute it. And you can see I'm getting a bit of it off of my cardstock onto the station. Normally I would do this on my glass mat and I would not have any issues. It comes right off. I do have to do a little bit of scrubbing and sort of like scratching just to get all of the bits off. But for the most part, it comes off really easily. So I'd love to see how that happens or how that works here on the station. Um, as far as the magnets holding it in place, it worked beautifully as well as the mag magnets holding the cardstock in place when I was ink blending right onto the cardstock with no stencil, it worked really nice. And again, it was really nice to not have to have all of the ink on my fingers and possibly be transferred to the rest of uh, my cardstock. So it actually, the glimmer paste comes off fairly easily. I'm just using water and a wipe or water and a paper towel, and it's coming off really easily. I'm also not getting any of that etched grid off, and I'm scrubbing pretty hard. I was honestly not trying to pull it off, but just I wanted to see how hard I could scrub, and none of it came off that time. None of the grid came off, and all of the glimmer paste came off, so that was really nice. So at least glimmer paste, when you go right away uh, to clean it up, will come off. I was talking to my friend Jenny and she said, I wonder about heat embossing. Um, does, do you think that heat embossing on it would make it a little bit better um, and not warped because you can put the, or you'll get less warping because you can put the magnets on there. So I took that a step further and said, okay, well, what if we heat emboss or heat a watercolored panel? Because I also hate when I get warping from watercoloring. So what I did was I took a piece of watercolor cardstock and placed the magnets on all four corners. I was able to easily pick this up and move it around, which was another really great feature. It's really light, like I said before. So if you're familiar with Jennifer McGuire's videos, how she uses a, a cutting board and she's able to pick it up and sort of move it around, this is a great uh, stand-in or substitute for that as well because it's really simple just to pick it up and move it around. That way you get a nice flow with your watercolors. So now I'm gonna go ahead and take my heat gun and just sort of dry the panel as I would normally anyway. Um, and I do get less warping. I was a little iffy if the um, to see if the surface itself would get really hot because it's steel and metal, but it really does and I didn't keep it on there enough. But you can see that I get really minimal warping and that's just from having those four magnets there on each corner, which I think is really, it's a great feature of the surface itself. So again, I went ahead and just wiped all of that off. And now what I'm going to do is use the ruler, which again is my favorite part of uh, the product itself. And I'm going to go ahead and try to center a stamped sentiment. And it's easy to do. I can just line it up right here when I line up my cardstock in the center. And now it's straight and it's perfect. And that was really easy. And you can use the ruler to line up sentiments, to line up images. It's really simple. And I do love that they have the center of the ruler marked with the zero. So I'm going to go ahead and try the craft mat because they suggest to have a craft mat. Now my craft mat is pretty large, but honestly, I think this is a standard size. On the box, they show a really small craft mat. It looks like maybe eight by eight um, onto the station. And 
obviously it's smaller than the station, but mine is larger than it. So it covers the entire surface. So honestly, for me, this was a definite no-go. I'm not going to use my large craft mat over my station because what's the point? You can see here that I have the magnets on the cardstock itself, but it's moving around because the craft mat is a really slick surface. So it's not the benefit of having it magnetic is no longer a benefit because it's moving around. So in my opinion, a craft mat is not something that, there's no benefit to using a craft mat over your station. The magnetic part of it doesn't work really because again, it's a really slick surface and I just don't see the benefit of having this if you're going to use a craft mat over it. I'm gonna go ahead now and use alcohol inks on this surface. Now, this is not the intended purpose of this surface. They don't even mention alcohol inks because obviously you wouldn't use an alcohol ink with this surface. It's going to stain it, the grids are going to come off, and I know that before going into it. But like I said, this is an experiment and I want to try everything. I'm obsessed with alcohol inks at the moment, so I'm going to use it for that now. I'm actually really loving that I can rotate the surface. Like I said, it's very light. So I can rotate it while using my air puffer. I really love that about it. And I think I'm going to go back into using it for this quite often. But like I said, it will stay in this surface. So just to be safe, to see what would happen, I put a little bit of the alcohol ink on purposely onto this station surface. I knew that it was going to stain just by wiping it off. And you can see that I did get a bit of this orange stain here. It's hard to see on the camera, but there is some discoloration. So what I'm going to do is remove that how I normally would with my glass mat. Now, I, again, I knew that this was going to happen, but I use Purell and this just takes off the alcohol ink really easily. So I did a little uh, dab of Purell and then I took a baby wipe and wiped that up. Now, I actually did have to scrub pretty hard, but as I expected, some of the grid came up because it's etched on there. It's not like into the surface. Other than that, I actually quite liked it uh, using it for alcohol inks. So I've compiled a bit of a pros and cons list here. Under the pros, I have obviously that it's magnetic. It's lightweight, so it's easy to pick up and move around when you're watercoloring or rotating it like I was with alcohol inks, uh, or you can just move it from room to room really easily. The magnetic ruler is great for lining things up on your card fronts. The etched grid is really great and easy to use. It's watercolor and ink safe, and it's a great price point at $17.99 on scrapbook.com. Uh, the cons, I've got limited medias. This was never marketed as an all media type of surface, but it's good to know what you can and can't use when you're spending your money on something. It's not secure to the workspace. If you know the glass mat well, you'll know that on the bottom there are these tiny little feet that kind of keep it secured to your surface. It would have been really great to have at least just a couple of things, maybe even those little cushions on the bottom of this to keep it secure to the actual surface when you're using it. There's no measurements on the grid. That would have been really great to be able to line things up, including using your uh, magnetic ruler. And it requires a craft mat for certain medias. So would I recommend this to other card makers? I think it's important to know that this is not a catch-all work surface. You certainly need something like a glass mat or a vantage mat, something else that you can do other projects on because this is so limited in the medias that you can use with it. Someone who I think would get the most use out of this station would be somebody who likes to do a lot of work with stencils, not just ink blending, because we saw that there is a little bit to be improved upon as far as where you can place the magnets and things like that. but. Even somebody who likes to watercolor over stencils or ink blend over stencils or use glimmer paste over stencils, you can do all of that easily and confidently with this station. I hope that you've enjoyed the review. If you have any questions or if there's anything I missed, please ask me in the comments. I'll be happy to answer. All of the supplies are listed in the description. And again, if you have anything else that you'd like me to review, please let me know. Thanks so much for stopping by. I'll see you soon.